we have been told that gold is real money and it's a great hatch against stock market crashes. But is it really? Today we will revisit the past 7 financial recessions and see how gold performed comparing to stock market and then we will see what is the best performing asset. Important history. The gold stayed at around $20 per ounce between 1870 and 1933. It's because United States was the classic gold standard during that period. The US fixed dollar's value to the gold by law. Starting with the Coinage Act of 1834, the government defined US dollar as a 23 grains of pure gold, which equivalent to $20 per ounce. The US Treasury, banks, had to exchange dollars for gold on demand. This meant you could walk into the bank with the paper money and get physical gold coins. So the government was obligated to keep the gold reserve to back the currency. Because the price was fixed by law, it did not fluctuate like it does today. The market price of gold was not set by supply and demand, it was legally packed. The stability was part of what people called sound money. The fixed price lasted until 1933, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt took US off the domestic gold standard and revalued gold at $35 per ounce in 1934, effectively devaluating dollar. By 1933, the US economy was collapsing, banks were falling, prices and wages were falling, people were hoarding gold instead of spending money. Because every dollar was tied to gold, the government could not easily expand the money supply to fight the depression. Gold hoarding drained the system. When people lost trust in banks, they withdrew money and demanded gold coins instead. This caused gold reserve and foundation of monetary system to drain rapidly, threatening to collapse the banking system. In 1933, FDR closed banks for weeks to stop the panic withdrawals, banned private gold ownership and required people to exchange gold for dollars at the official price at $20 per ounce. This allowed the government to reclaim the gold reserve and control the monetary supply. Then in 1934, under the Gold Reserve Act, FDR raised the official gold price to $35 per ounce. This meant that dollar was worth less in gold, devaluation by 40%. This gave the government more dollars for every ounce of gold it held, effectively increasing the monetary supply, helping end deflation and stimulate economy. Gold was at $35 per ounce from 1933 all the way until 1971. After the World War II, the Bretton Woods Agreement was created, which meant that US dollar was packed to gold at $35 per ounce and other countries fixed the currency to US dollar. Essentially, what happened, other countries, especially from Europe, sent most of their gold to the United States in exchange for dollars. As US inflation was rising because of the Vietnam War spending and social programs, those countries held huge amount of US dollars and began demanding gold in exchange. In 1971, President Nixon temporarily suspension of dollar to gold convertibility <laughs> and basically scammed European partners. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. What so-called temporarily suspension lasts until this day. Therefore, since 1971, gold price is determined by the market forces, supply and demand, as dollar is no longer packed to gold. And therefore, it is better to investigate gold's performance only for the past 55 years because before 1971, the price was fixed. Now, we can compare gold's performance to S&P 500. Specifically, let's take a look how gold's performance compares to S&P 500 performance during the bear market and then we'll take a look at the bigger picture. 1973 to 1975 recession. GDP declined roughly 3%, unemployment peak at 9%, 
and in mid 1975 inflation averaged at 10 to 12 percent main cause oil crisis and of the Bretton Woods system after the Nixon took US off the gold standard at 1971 and stagflation inflation soared about 10 percent while the economy growth stalled between 1973 to 1974 bear market was one of the most severe global stock market drawdowns since the great depression s p 500 dropped from 120 points all the way down to 48 points in 21 months that is going to be 48 percent drop while gold skyrocketed gold on the other hand went up from 65 dollars per ounce all the way to 150 dollars per ounce within the same 21 months window that is going to be 130 percent increase the next recession came at the beginning of the following decade 1980 to 1982 recession period was one of the most painful economic drawdowns in u.s history gdp declined about 2.7 percent unemployment peaked at 10.8 percent the highest since 1940s inflation peaked at 14 percent in 1980s between 1980s and 1982 s p 500 fell from 140 points to 100 points that is going to be 28 percent drop while gold fell from 650 dollars per ounce all the way down to 330 dollars per ounce within the same period of time that is going to be 49 percent drop yes we can see sometimes gold can even drop more than the stock market but it's not what you think i will get to it later on this video let's move on to the next one black monday october 19 1987 was one of the most dramatic single day stock market crash in history global financial shock that seems to came out of nowhere there wasn't one single cause it was a chain reaction of financial psychological and technical factors like new automated trading overvaluation rising interest rates and trade deficit the largest one day percentage drop ever in one single day s p 500 was down by 20 percent in that month of october the index managed to decrease from 330 points down to 225 points overall drop 32 percent and what did gold do gold actually slightly increased at the same period of time it went up from 450 dollars per ounce to 480 dollars per ounce that is going to be six percent increase moving to the next stock market crash and the recession of 1990s it was short and shallow recession that marked the end of 1980s boom officially dates july 1990s to march 1991 duration eight months gdp declined minus 1.4 percent total unemployment peaked at 7.8 percent main cause oil prices spike and tight monetary policies the fed led by alan greenspan raised the interest rates in the late 1980s to control inflation slowing the economy just before the oil shock hit s p 500 dropped from 380 points to 295 points that is going to be 22 percent decline while gold actually went up from 350 dollars per ounce to 370 dollars per ounce which will be five percent increase now guys let's move on to 2000s.com bubble the 2000s.com bubble was one of the most famous financial bubble in history dramatic collapse in technology stocks that punctuated the rapid rise of internet companies in late 1990s excessive investment in internet startup led to widespread bankruptcies companies cut spending on tech and equipment after realizing previous investments were overvalued duration eight months gdp decline minus 0.5 percent in real terms unemployment peaked at 6.3 percent s p 500 dropped from 1520 points to 800 points that is going to be 48 percent decline while gold on the other hand increased from 275 dollars per ounce to 325 dollars per ounce at the same 
period of time which is going to be 15 percent increase the next one is big one 2008 financial crisis and housing bubble it was the worst global economic crisis since the great depression it was triggered by the collapse of u.s housing market and the massive failure of the financial system built around it home prices soared during the early 2000s fueled by easy credit low interest rates and subprime mortgages when prices peaked and began falling millions of homeowners could not pay their loans triggering the wave of defaults duration 18 months gdp declined roughly 4.3 percent unemployment peaked at 10 percent within that 18 months s p 500 declined from 1560 points to 680 points which would be 57 percent drop this is the largest stock market decline since 1930s great depression but what happened to gold the price of yellow metal rose from $800 per ounce all the way to $850 per ounce at the same period of time. That would be 11% increase. Shows again and again as a perfect hedge against market crashes. Lastly, let's move on to the most recent 2020 recession known as a COVID recession. It was one of the sharpest and most sudden economic collapses in modern history triggered not by financial imbalance but by global pandemic that shut down entire economy almost over night start february 2020 and april 2020 duration only two months the shortest u.s recession on the record but extremely deep gdp declined 10 percent annually in q2 2020 unemployment peaked at 14.7 percent in april 2020 the highest since Great Depression. S&P 500 fell from 340 points to 2,200 points, minus 34% decline from February to March 2020. But what happened to gold? Well, gold dipped by 11% at one point. However, it's not what you think. If you measure exact period of time when S&P 500 declined, which is February 18 until March 23, on February 18, gold was at around $1,618 per ounce, and on March 23, it was at $1,560 per ounce. Therefore, that will be only 3.5% drop. So, as we can see, the only significant decline in gold market was during 1980-1982 recession, where gold declined by 49%. However, prior to that crash, gold spent entire decade in the bull market where it rose by 2,400%. So I think gold dropped not necessarily because of the recession, but because it had such an extreme rise a decade before. It just so happened that gold was dropping during the recession. Despite one big drop, judging by historic 55 years data, I do believe gold is a great hedge against the recession and it is a flight to safety when stock market is crashing. So yes guys, gold was down big in 1980s recession and it was down just so slightly in 2020 COVID crash, but in other recessions it was up. Therefore, it was up 5 out of 7 past recession, that's roughly 71% of the time. Gold, not only it's a great hedge against market declines, but it is also outperformed stock market since 1971, just before Nixon took dollar off of the gold standard. Before 1971, dollar was packed to gold at $35 per ounce, and today gold is $4,200 per ounce. That is going to be 120x or 11,900% increase within 55 years period with compound annual growth rate of 9.09%. Investing $1,000 in gold 55 years ago, now you would have $120,000. Now let's take a look at the S&P 500. In early 1971, S&P 500 was at 100 points. 55 years later, today it is at 6,850 points. 
that will be only 68x or 6,700% increase with a compound annual growth rate at 7.98%. Investing $1,000 into S&P 500 55 years ago, now it would be $68,000. So as we can see, 1% in annual compound interest rates is a huge difference as investing in gold 55 years ago, now you would have almost twice more money than investing in S&P 500. There you go guys, gold is not only a great hedge against market crashes, but it also outperformed stock market in the past 55 years. Let me know your thought, comment below.